cameras to see each other. Hello, Barbara. Nice to see you. You one? Hello. Hi. Hi, Sylvia. Hi. Hi. Hi, Eric. Hi, hi, hi. hi. <laughs> so hello to Katerina, Nicolina, and uh, one more Milena. So we are three uh, for now. Okay, to Milena. Uh, okay, don't worry. If you can come back. Um, how are you people? Did you bring some drinks with you? <laughs> <laughs> so, me too. And I just check it. What's the name of the drink in English? Because I don't know. I know in Serbian is uh, Zova. In Bulgarian is Buzz. So buzz juice is sounds totally crazy. So we just check it before uh, our meeting. So is elder, eld, elderberry. Elderflower. Is it elderberry or elder? I don't know. What I, do thought, you... I thought it was a big glass of rakia, Milena. Uh, <laughs> 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 we need to train to to get to this glass of rakia and we don't train enough but this glass of elderberry elderflower yes i made it it's for the first time in my life i made it really two days by yourself yes yes you're a magician right <laughs> no, like homemade i'm so yeah. proud i did something big really <laughs> So what did you bring people? What are your favorite things? Do you have something, coffee or beer or what is that, Barbara? I don't hear, we don't hear you. Uh, just water. Beautiful. <laughs> we have 32 degrees in Ljubljana. Really hot. We also in Sofia. Yes. But this is silver water or? No, no, it's pure uh, natural tap water. Don't worry, nothing hidden. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no rakia. <laughs> it's too hot for rakia. Yeah. Is there anybody there with the water also? Yeah, me too. I'm with water. I drink cacao with sugar, lots of sugar. <laughs> Katia also with water. 
with a lavender infusion. Wow. <laughs> oh, what is that? Hmm? Kind of like a lavender infusion. Hmm. You know, this uh, like here. Uh -huh. And it's kind of like a, a tea of lavender and chamomile. And oh, it's just to, to keep relaxed <laughs> during the day. Uh, sounds delicious. I haven't drink lavender never in my life. And still, it's, it's delicious. You should try yeah. it. Yeah, I will. Yeah. <laughs> sounds great. <laughs> and Sylvia and you want you bring you came we we'll bring what which kind of uh, drink? Me? Yeah. Um, I showed you water, but uh, I'm not <laughs> with lavender, but. Uh, every time when I uh, go out uh, her because, because she's now out of school in a vacancy and uh, always is uh, to do something for me and when I go out she uh, usually puts some flowers from the garden in my water <laughs> so every time I have a su surprise uh, in Hi, uh, in, in this basket, <laughs> in the basket of my bike. <laughs> Thank you. And you, you want? Just tea, normal. Just tea. Bill Grey tea. Just tea, it's tea. <laughs> so cheers, uh, then, and uh, cheers and welcome with our beautiful drinks. So this is our third. Uh, and the uh, last online discussion and meeting during this project, not in live. So this uh, um, subject of this meeting is symbiosis, theater in uh, physical and in digital environment. Uh, maybe uh, I will uh, share with you um, who are the organization, which organizations are here and who are the people in front of the organizations. So now as I see it, um, Katia Kazakova representing Kambana Art uh, Theater Company. Uh, Katia, please uh, say it uh, just to be in the focus. Okay, uh, then, um, Yuan Briok representing, please Yuan, that word is so hard for us. Oh, uh, Theatre Kanevin? Da, I can, can Kanevin? Kanevin? Kanevin. So in yeah. front of the theatre. Just, just say Kevin very quickly. What? Just say Kevin very quickly. Kevin. Uh, okay. <laughs> yes. Uh, Yuan Briok. And from. Um, in front of Sensorama, um, Eric Bernard. Hello, hello. Uh, we also have a very special guest, uh, Barbara Jenic from... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I have worked in the house and I have noises because we are building the furniture. Hello. So that's why I put my mic microphone off when you call me in the middle, when you talk, so you don't have noise. Uh -huh. Okay. So thank you. I am here by, uh, by accident. I am not part of uh, organization of this project, but I'm very happy that you met and that you discussed this stuff. There is no um, such, uh, not part of it, because a first step where we really connect in a digital way is the space uh, which Barbara creates on uh, some Facebook uh, group with theater, uh, sensory theater makers and groups. So that there is a first uh, digital space where, where we connect, so it's not, um, yeah, not coincidence that she is here, very special person, um, and uh, Lubomira Kostova. 
Hey everyone, in it's me driving of, here. <laughs> yeah, in front of Rubekula. Uh, so yeah. she will say something about the organizations and herself later. We are so happy to have you with us. Thank you, I'm happy to be here. And honored to have Milena Mikhailova, Silvia Borisova. I don't see you people, Nikolina Deleva and Milena, also part of, um, of this discussion. And for us, it's also important your, your point of view or the things that you will share with us or, or ask us or put on question <laughs> during the discussion. Uh, and also, you see it, Momchilvo Denicharo, but that is not. Momchilvo Dinicharo, that is Margarita Petrova, the actress, <laughs> and my dear friend and colleague <laughs> from many years, uh, Nazad, many years. Back in time. <laughs> many years. Okay. So great to have you here. Anna is again in the back. Uh, from Inner Theater Company. We are here just to share it. It's Eliana Royo. Hi. Drasti. Uh, Gabriela Petrova. And Anna Volceva. Okay. And Anna is here. Hello. Drasti. Hello, everybody. <laughs> so, uh, uh, as I share it with you, this is. Uh, like last third and last hour meeting. And so that means that our project is coming to, to the end. And we also have some uh, materials to share it with you. So we would like to start uh, uh, with sharing uh, one trailer that we made specially for this uh, uh, meeting to share with you those uh, five sensory online performances that we made during the uh, during the project. And so, uh, and then we can talk and discuss if you don't want. да си говоря сама понякога. На портокали по коледа. Портокали по коледа? Да. Кортешки бели лапички. Този хубав ваш глас. Слушате. Слушали сте се. Разчувства се. Тоест, тоест, получихме вашия сигнал. Има ли звук светлината? Какъв е вкусът на кожата? На отворете устата и една голяма захапка. Не е Продължавайте да хапете. Я е твоята. Павно докосни моята. Шината с очите си тогава чува прекрасен глас. Доладаха ръцете аромат на нежна власт. Здравейте, 
Здравейте. Здравейте. Докосване. Докосване. accomplished these five performances or these five what does it feel like mm. it was uh, quite an interesting and unexpected journey because we were thinking about some things but <laughs> other things came up <laughs> some things more a little bit more complicated than we thought they would be and uh, needed much more time and we were we had a lot of surprises uh, especially in the way different performers approach uh, the interaction and uh, how we really could provoke emotions and senses senses to through Zoom through this platform which are all in now because all of these uh, performances were here and we we had only <laughs> those instruments those tools which are built in that platform and it was exciting <laughs> and strange <laughs> in a way <laughs> but here uh, they are there also Anna and Elian they could they could share and Mimena also if they want to ask that question well uh, firstly I would like to to thank uh, to all of the crew of the inner theater company that I was uh, invited in this project. And uh, what to say, how I feel? Uh, I can say, uh, uh, yeah, this, this project forced me to, to develop a, a lot of uh, skills here, uh, starting uh, from the drawing because uh, 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 particularly, my uh, performance was uh, focused on on my drawings, uh, and uh, this was this was the first skill I I started to 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 train uh, after the lockdown started, and uh, then. When uh, we start this project, uh, I also experienced to, to compose some music. Uh, what else? Then uh, to edit uh, video files. 
And uh, also, as I said uh, in our second meeting, uh, the digital artists, I mean, digital artists in uh, this case, when you try to, to make uh, not just uh, physical theater in front of the camera, but uh, uh, there is no uh, someone to to record you with camera or to to manage your sound or how do you look uh, when you are alone in front of uh, the computer? Uh, most of the time, you have to to be aware what is going on there in this space. So. Uh, I don't know uh, if we succeed to uh, to implement the uh, interactive and uh, sensory theater in digital platforms, but uh, for sure, uh, someone who starting this action. Uh, takes uh, more, uh, how to say, uh, everyone who starting this, uh, uh, maybe uh, succeed to, to be more open-minded. I don't know uh, uh, what are, what were the, how the, the senses of the audience were provoked, but for sure, uh, I think I'm a more sensitive person. <laughs> and that's all for now. <laughs> for you, Anna? For me? <laughs> how was it for you? Uh, Oh, for me, this was a really big challenge because uh, I uh, chose uh, to work with uh, smell, smell feeling. Uh, yes, no. Sm smell feeling. And uh, in one moment, I, I was, oh no, it's impossible. It's impossible to provoke uh, the sm smell feeling uh, uh, using Zoom. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it was a long, long way. <laughs> you know, but, uh, uh, Anna. but uh, maybe the hardest thing for me was that I uh, it's really hard to feel the, the audience uh, <clears throat> because uh, when you perform on stage or uh, in live uh, performance, uh, you can feel if they want to say something because it's uh, because it's uh, interactive performance. So uh, it's really hard to feel way when they want to say something or uh, to join. So it was interesting, <laughs> in fact. So and uh, the, yeah, really, thank you. Oh, the team. Yeah, when when you are on a live stage, uh, for example, uh, in front of uh, public, uh, the audience, uh, which uh, is uh, just uh, just sitting on and uh, looking at you, uh, you you are sure when. Uh, someone is uh, calling, for example, or uh, someone's phone is uh, ringing, uh, you're sure that this is not a message for you. <laughs> yeah. But uh, in uh, this digital space, uh, you're not sure because maybe someone uh, is forgetting to, to switch off uh, their microphone or uh, 
does he wants to tell you something to to give an answer to you you don't know because for us uh, the most important is the answer in yeah. fact uh, a few days before the performance i was oh no never never again a long performance never <laughs> but now now it's different it was really nice experience and yeah i want to make it again maybe <laughs> <laughs> Maybe nice one at the end. <laughs> and for you, Milena? Uh, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> it definitely is Rakia. <laughs> um, I just asked, uh, having achieved the project so far, how do you feel? You know, how do you feel that? So we, we feel like a Shiva in physical body. <laughs> As Elian said, shared that uh, he developed different skills. So I think that the whole team developed many different skills. So if we work with two hands before or and make it like a 10, now with this experience, it's like we work with 100, let's say. It's really new, new things. It was very challenging, beautiful, totally new and uh, and surprising. And for me, surprise came with the came with the uh, with the with the direct meeting with the audience. So after each perform, we didn't plan it, but it just starts from the first performance that the um, uh, meeting with the audience. So to stay and discuss like uh, yes immediately after the performance just to people who wants to stay and to talk with the artists and to discuss the subject and how they are feeling and then we continuing uh, that thing during the whole performances and for me that was uh, that was surprising and very maybe one of the most valuable thing that we discovered during this uh, during this online experience. Because now with us here are the people, some of the people that we met during the, and after our performances. And Milena, hi Milena. So Milena, <laughs> can you say just a few words and where are you from? Just to share other things with people and to hear your voice, voice if you don't mind. You mean me, because we're three Milena. No, no, no. Milena, Milena. You are Milena Mikhailova. Dobre, okay. Because I want, I want to say something as well after that, okay? About I will, yes. yes. Okay, so do you mean me then? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> good. Well, uh, what shall I say? I thought that exactly as you said, the, that uh, the discussions were really exciting because usually, well, uh, when I go to the theater, I just go watch and go again. <laughs> Afterwards, probably if I'm a, with a friend, then we discuss uh, with a friend, but uh, there is never a possibility to speak afterwards. I mean, in the traditional form of the theater. Uh, then another thing is that if, uh, if this was not online, then I wouldn't be able to, uh, to be present at all because I live in Stockholm uh, usually. So for me, it was a really nice possibility. Um, and then I was thinking about this, uh, what you said, Anna, that it is so difficult to um, somehow to get in touch with, uh, with the senses online, for example, with the sense of smell. But at the same time, for me, it was actually somehow it, it really works. <laughs> because in a way, uh, when you're alone on this, uh, like behind the screen, uh, in a way it is more alone, but in a way it is, um, probably easier to get in touch with yourself because you're more relaxed, you're in your own environment and then somehow you can actually start to, uh, to, do, to be more conscious about it. Uh, so for me, it was actually really interesting to get insights from uh, yeah, the discussions, from the performances uh, and uh, from this new form because most of the time I was like, um, skeptical about online things 
Um, for example, I know that there are ballets or theatres that have um, public published online their um, yeah some uh, plays or ballets. But the thing is that for me this wouldn't be interesting because it really wouldn't be the same in a good way. But uh, what you do was actually I, I think it was it was a successful way to do it online. Um, yeah, it would be interesting to experience it, uh, it live, of course, but uh, it's a beginning. <laughs> so the peop uh, with people like Milena, we so digital performance, it gives us the chance to connect with people who are not living in Bulgaria. And uh, with people who are living in Sofia uh, or in Bulgaria, we make like a, a personal meetings after that, if we don't know each other previously so like with Sylvia <laughs> she is here and strong connection with Milena she is here and other um, and other people so that was very va valuable things uh, from from this experience and this uh, uh, experiment and uh, you know whatever that is everything I think many things and when we started the project we <laughs> we uh, we visited online performance of sensorama so and uh, i want to share with you eric if i didn't uh, share it uh, on the first meeting that really visiting your performance online in the beginning of the project uh, give us uh, like a belief and strength and that uh, you, you know what is the word in in uh, English uh, some confidence some kind of confidence that mm -hmm. it's possible yeah we experience it that also confidence that we have you know yet it's the it's the new a new platform, new sphere, okay, it's digital, but, but we have some knowledge and also previous experiences, so we can put it. So being part of, and being the audience uh, in, uh, in your performance and, uh, and going through that experience as audience, as artists and also as people, that that experience touched us in many, many different ways. So thank you very much for that uh, possibility, you know, and, and everything that we take from that experience. Thank you. Thank you, Milena, for, for experiencing it. Yes, for, for us, it was uh, a challenge and we were very insecure about um, about having these kind of performances via via online, and I guess I mean having a reflection now, uh, looking backwards, uh, I guess that we we needed to do it because of our own lack of security of our own uh, tools. Uh, that was uh, our first motivation, and also uh, we felt again vulnerable you know mm. because uh, when you start to perform uh, over and over and over uh, the same kind of of theater place uh, sensory theater place it is kind of inevitable that you you uh, fall into a false uh, into false place of of overconfidence you know mm. that that it triggers kind of like a, like a, okay it's it's the same process or one over and over and over again and you're like uh, like a feeling motivated to do it you know and and I guess when as an artist and as a performer when you um, disconnect from your own vulnerability that's very dangerous because uh, it it produces the, the the for your creativity to stop, you know, 
you don't you don't take some uh, any risk you unconsciously you you trace your own safe uh, area you know when you feel that you you feel more comfortable you know and yes you know you 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 stay there as long as you as you want you know but all of a sudden you start to look around and there are other companies that are taking chances in in technology you know like in uh, virtual mode or um, you know a uh, binaural audio and you know and, and if you don't if you don't stay uh, uh, continue to keep forward and and taking some steps of of risking steps you uh you started to to go back you know even if you don't move you know so uh, it, it was kind of like like a really risky process but we in a sense all this uh situation about the quarantine and the pandemic uh it was a, an opportunity to reconnect with other people's vulnerability yeah. you know yeah. because um we, we started to perceive that people needed uh, being in touch with themselves more than ever, you know, because the lack of, of, of the sense of togetherness, of, of the sense of, of closeness, it, it was something that, that people uh, didn't have the chance to put into words, you know? I mean, they didn't have the words to articulate the very lack of um feeling out of touch you know so when they enter you know uh, uh into into our own um performances they they realized you know that oh my god i mean this was happening years before the quarantine you know and people uh are always um at the end of the performances said Thank you, thank you very much for for allowing me to 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 get into contact with myself, uh, to to touch myself, to touch my skin, to to remember that I have a body, that I have senses, that I have imagination, that I have, you know, and it is very paradoxical that they come to realize all that important stuff in a virtual theater, you know. Because sometimes they say, well, maybe if I, if I went to uh, an ordinary and conventional theater play, I, I, I wouldn't have this realization about myself, you know? So this very lack of, of closeness allow that, uh, that spark of consciousness, you know? So, so for, for us, it was a very learning process and and, and an opportunity to reinvent ourselves, and we continue to do so. And and we we started go back to 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 conventional uh, sensory plays in, in our in our theater, but we we kept continuing to to develop other kind of 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 plays uh, and thematics in, in in virtuality. So it is it, it, it's been a, a very interesting process for us. And, and thank you, Milena, for for connecting your vulnerability to, to ours because that, that was a learning process for us too. Thank you. Thank you. Milena, you wanted to share something, Milena Mikhailova, you wanted to share something with us? Uh -huh. Yes, it's my turn. Okay, thank you for giving me the word. Uh, yes, uh, I'm very excited uh, because I was attending all the performances of uh, Inner Theater, all the five actually, almost all the five. Actually, I missed only one, I think, but whatever. So it was very, very interesting for me, very inspiring, very, because uh, I want to say that first, I want to say that I, I'm, I'm a theater critic, you know? <laughs> and it was a, a very big provocation for me as well, you know, not only for you guys, because you are all some kind of performance actors, you know, but I'm a theater critic. And for me, it was very interesting and provo provocation, big, big provocation for me as well, because uh, in these kind of performances, which are presenting uh, here, uh, we all we cannot uh, at all anymore be only actors or only theater critics. You know, you have to participate. You have to be to be emotional. You have to be yourself. You know, you can never anymore be only professional working and, and observing what's going on on the stage or 
in this performance, for example. Uh, and for me, it was a very big provocation because I had to be myself. I had to feel, I had to touch uh, emotions of other people uh, in this uh, online event. Uh, but it's uh, when, you, when, you, when we talk about online event, it's never, it's, it's never uh, any more online artificial uh, event or something like this. It's real. It's happening in real life, in real time, real time, you know. It's a real time emotion for all of us. You know, so you can never say anymore that it's only online. Online nowadays is uh, uh, like uh, a new kind of liveness, you know. It's uh, really live happening now and here and now at the moment. And we are all in this and we are all uh, emotionally inspired from uh, what was happening uh, on this virtual stage. And uh, the uh, good thing for me was that uh, we were all together and this togetherness, which we're talking about uh, here at the moment, it happened, it, it, it really happened, you know. We were, we were online from all over the world, but we were all together and it was so nice to be together. It was really uh, uh, like inspiring and uh, remembering and it was really great. So Milena and all of you, thank you for all this experience. It was really great to be with you all. Uh, and what, what else I wanna say? I wanna say different things because it was really emotional and uh, how to say, uh, Maybe I'll continue later, but it was really very, very nice to to hear to to, to see uh, Elian's uh, drawings, his music, which you know uh, I know him like an actor, but really he's very right that here at this moment, at these uh, five performances, we could uh, we had the chance actually to to see himself, the real himself, you know him in this in you know this what's happening, his drawings, his uh, uh, real story. Uh, to see uh, different kind of uh, sharings from different people on, I mean, artists, but actually real people. You know, as I said, you are not real, you are not only actors in this kind of experience, you know. We are all together here. And Anna as well, which, uh, who, who was here on, at her Aroma, uh, how, how was the title, Anna, of her performance? Aromatosphere. Arom Aromosphere, yeah, Aromosphere, yes. It was so exciting because we were online, but at the same moment, we, we were able actually to feel and all the all the smells of uh, of the, uh, the smell of the childhood, for example, the smell of uh, of, of summer, uh, all diff different kind of aroma things, uh, um, different kind of uh, things which which you can usually feel only in real life, but we um, here we were able to really to feel and to experience them as real but uh, in online reality, you know, it was very magical actually because we were able to feel all this, never mind that we were online, okay? So it was great for us, so I think. Yeah, so it was really very, very nice experience. So never, never, never hesitate if it uh, was it good or not, it was great, okay? So <laughs> yeah, it was really very nice for me to experience all this. Thank we you. Hear each other? Do, do we hear each other? Yeah, yes. Thank you, Milena. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So, shall I continue, or Sylvia would like to share something? <laughs> I see also Katya is looking so inspired. <laughs> ah, can I say just something more? Sorry for interrupting. Can you say something more? Yes, I just, yes, please. Yes, yes, sorry. Because I was thinking about something else, uh, uh, which uh, uh, Milan was talking about. Milan, you were talking about this, uh, how was for you all this experience? And I think that uh, what was the new thing for you all? I think that uh, uh, when we're talking about uh, real life experience in, in, in a virtual space at, the, at this uh, case, I think that all of you, as a theater critic, I can uh, I can say this: you are trying and you are doing it in a very successful way to be even more authentic. You know, to find to find the ways in which you to be really more authentic than you you would be, for example, in a real performance in real life. I think like this. I mean, you 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 were, you were provoked and you you found uh, very interesting ways to be authentic, uh, even in uh, online reality. You know which is very, very provocative and very difficult actually to do it. 
I mean to be to be uh, to be uh, authentic, but in online environment, you know. Yeah. And all the things which which we did, uh, I mean, like uh, different different kind of uh, visual 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 uh, visual visual ideas, if you want, if you want some kind of uh, poetry as well through the body or through language or through uh, some kind of pictures, what, whatever. Uh, but you did it with different kind of uh, sources to be authentic, even online, which is great. Yes. You know, Milena, I, I talk about, thank you very much. I talk about that with Katya. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not joking, Katya, it's real. <laughs> I'm not trying to, but we talk about that one, uh, one time. Uh, so we start, uh, to do online things. So in, in, in this environment, new for us, for digital environment. Mm -hmm. So we are yeah. all exploring and let's say if new, don't knew nothing. You know, in some way we don't knew nothing. So you explore things and we share uh, with, each, with each other, Katya and me. It's very interesting that, that in this new environment, during you, you exploring and finding new things, you also knew, you feel it, you knew it when something is not right. It doesn't matter that the, that environment is new for you, you know it that when it's not real, you know, real like a, like a connection, mm -hmm. like a sense, like a, it's not correct and real in the way, uh, like, uh, Heart to heart, let's say it, or in the, in aesthetic way of the aesthetics and the way of the theater and way in the performance and connection that you want to to create. You feel it. Yes, exactly. Remember you that uh, talk that we have, Katya. So we talk about your performance and your experience creating the performances for children and how you change the light and things that you use to make it the light as you want and also playing in front of camera and uh, so make it make it like a, like like a strong connection with the audience but finding some kind of new waves ways can you say something about your experience Говорим за форум театъра. Yes. Може ли на български? Извинете. Yes, yes you can of, can, of course. I, maybe I can help you with my strange um, English. Uh, but we will help you all, of course. Uh, not just about the forum theater, forum theater, but also your other experiences in digital platform, because you have more than one not uh, just in one one theater sphere ne samo u to forum teatra nego i drugi te ti opiti koji tu si imala a te ne sa malko te sa nekoliko u sferata na različite teatralni formi u digitalna sreda koja tu si imala uh, people if some of you are very fluent in english and understand uh, bulgarian please help me with translation i'm not so good in it so if you don't mind just sylvia raised hands <laughs> okay great <laughs> thank you sylvia uh, 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 tilie, one of the things uh, is together in the play or in the game of of tales a fairy tales um izrabotvat prikazki izrazvat geroite pravjat gi kato kukli uh they uh, work on uh tales cut cut them uh make uh, those of them too isle tva razigravame prikazkata va fefir and after that, uh, oh, we, I don't know, play, fight, the tail. Um, in, in air. Right? No. Okay. 
И в тези атилиета се включват и а, големи и малки. Тоест, то не е за... няма ограничения във възрастта. And this uh, ateliers or events uh, are about uh, for adults and children. There is uh, no limitation in each. И в общи линии това нещо работи за развиване на въображението. Това, което явно в момента липсва доста. And now that uh, works uh, for developing imagination, uh, which lacks uh, a lot. Искам нещо да кажа във връзка с представлението на Ани, защото бях в ролята на публика. I would like to say something about uh, Ани's uh, performance because I was in the public. Uh, това, което видях е, че сетивният театър започна много да говори. Uh, what I saw uh, was uh, that uh, the theater of senses started to, to speak a lot. До сега се учихме да мълчим, за да можем телепатично да се свързваме с другия. Uh, till now uh, we're learning how to silent in order to connect uh, in a telepathic way with each other. А сега обратно се учим да говорим, за да влезем в други. Uh, and now just the opposite, uh, we are learning to speak in order to, to enter the other. И да започнем да комуникираме с неговите усещания. През вербално. Вербално да комуникираме с неговите усещания. Uh, and uh, to play, uh, to start communicating with uh, his or her, her senses, with the other senses, started to feel through them. Най-хубавото е, че uh, и сетивния театър, и форум театъра, и плейбек театъра, това са форми, които ние като актьори сме обучавани да търсим партньорство с публиката. И онлайн формата в това отношение не е пречка. And it's uh, nice that uh, we are from uh, the Theater of Senses, the Focus Theater and Kogre uh, Theater. Playback. playback. Uh, yes, and the Playback uh, Theater uh, have been studying uh, all these things, how, how to connect each other. I forgot the whole sentence, Просто ни даде нови инструменти. Gave us a new instruments. За да стигнем до публика. Not us to reach the public. Да не ви уморявам повече. Благодаря, Катя, много. Uh, I would uh, like to ask you something because uh, um, as we started that project, um, for me, I was uh, really eager for the creative process and uh, how we could build a team and team dynamic when we are not together, how we could interact and provoke the senses. But uh, at the end, I'm thinking about the contribution with which we could make with uh, this kind of performances. So what you are saying also today, all of you, uh, and uh, that we are connecting to each other and it doesn't matter where we are and it doesn't matter if we even cannot um, see each other if we are not online. And I was also thinking about that opportunity that uh, people who could not even if we have a physical performance or in, rea in physical reality, uh, they could not come because uh, they have some disabilities or they because the, phys the physical labyrinth performance, the sensory performance, they are much more involving uh, the body. We sometimes climb or crawl or whatever, and many people could not participate in them, but they could experience those sensory performances online, doesn't matter of their state. 
And uh, I was thinking to ask you all which you are um, doing those kind of performances in digital environment, doesn't matter forum theater or uh, sensory theater, uh, did you find out some kind of uh, unexpected uh, values and unexpected possibilities, not only aesthetically, creative, cre creatively, but uh, kind of impact of our own society? Uh, I suppose, uh, uh, Gabi, that that is uh, also the questions for for each one of us here, because mm -hmm. maybe we have yes, a sense yes. as an audience, not as a creators, or or just. Is of it course, it's this for everyone. Yeah. It's a difficult question. Or... Uh, Gabriella, what was the question? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> the question was um, if you are, have experienced or if you are creating a sensory performance or forum theater performance online, have you uh, find out some kind of uh, social, different social values and connecting with the audience, maybe not so in the creative way, but more like an impact on uh, some kind of different issues. Because uh, what I was uh, thinking those days is that these performances, they could uh, touch and they could approach people who otherwise could not participate never in sensory performance. And it could be a tool to work with people with disabilities, with people who are some, because of some reasons closed in their homes, and could not go uh, out uh, because of many different issues. And it's something that really touched me. Uh, and, I, and I haven't think about it at the beginning. At the beginning, I was thinking much more about uh, creative things and yes, connections, so, but uh, not that we could use this, what we are doing uh, as something much more, um, with much more impact that we were thinking about. And my question was if some of you have discovered something like that. I know that since Ramar, you're doing sensor healing. And maybe from that point of view, uh, maybe the, from the point of audience, you have different um, conclusions. I don't know what that is. I think um, I can share a little bit. And it's a negative thing, you know, because we assume there is a lot of digital inequality. So I, I was doing forum theater for refugees and I was mm -hmm. here in the UK and it was very difficult to get an audience because they do not have access to to Wi-Fi. It's as simple as that. <laughs> so you know, we can we can have very idealistic uh, aspirations but you know if, they, if, if while um, there isn't equality in access to to Wi-Fi and to equipment and mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, from from um, Sensorama, um, we, we started to develop this this area that, that is called uh, healing. Our director, Hector Fernandez, was developing developing a, a methodology um, that is based on sensual analysis. So that it's kind of like the therapeutic process. Um, very individual uh, approach that uh, it's not artistic uh, approach, but it's just more therapeutic. And it's kind of like a common, a common therapy, but um, every once in a while, um, the patient uh, has the opportunity to, to, to live a sensory experience, just to, to reconnect with uh, his emotions, sensations, uh, memories, etc. Mm -hmm. And fr from that point of view, that therapeutic process also enriched the artistic one. So uh, during this quarantine, uh, we developed a play um, that I guess uh, some of you already uh, lived that is called A Place for the Monsters. And it is a play that originally was focused for children, you know, but 
in the creative process, we also include all the family into the creative process of the play. Uh, th this, th this, this is a, 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 a virtuality, a, a virtual, virtual play. So um, we, we, we started to listen to children, to children's needs during this uh, quarantine. And they uh, didn't have this same perception of, uh, uh, as the adults have about all that was going, going on with the pandemic. But they started to resent the stress and the fear and the insecurity of their own parents, you know? So uh, in, in children, they started to recreate their own way to imagine their own monsters, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, children are, as many of you, of, uh, I'm sure you know, are the, the most creative artist, you know? Uh, they also have the, the need to express all their emotions into art through paintings, through play, through dancing, to uh, um, uh, recreating some characters, you know? So in this, in this way, we include the, the, their, their, their parents into the, into the process. So at the end of the play, uh, the parents um, were very thankful for us because they, they say that, that it was not just the monsters that, uh, that children feared. They're, they're, they're also the monster that, that the parents, you know, had in their own unconscious, you know. And it was this opportunity to, in this, uh, th through this sensory play, to, to express and to be free to talk about our own fears, you know, in a, in a very playful way, in a very creative uh, process. So all the tensions um, uh, inside the, all the family dynamics were, you know, uh, released in a way. So it was artistic, but in the same way, it was kind of like therapeutic for the whole family, you know? So we, we know that uh, a family without stress are less, less capable to develop some symptoms, some physical symptoms, you know, mm -hmm. in, in, in a therapeutic way. So in a way, so that, that, that's, that's how we discovered that this play had in consequence that, that social impact, so that, that, that uh, therapeutic impact as well, along as, as the aesthetics of, of, of the artistic uh, mm -hmm. interest that we have, you know? So that's that's kind of like we 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 were discovered with this play. We we invite you all to to live it, of course. You know, <laughs> uh, we could participate in it. Sure, sure. Let me just make a, a couple of phone calls and <laughs> we, we, we can arrange something. <laughs> okay, it would be great. Thank you. Right, right. Excuse me, can I just ask you because I think that I missed it out. Uh, how old were the children, or it? doesn't matter. Um, it was kind of like from uh, ages between four, five, six, or uh, six up to 12, you know, in, mm -hmm. in, that, in that range. Uh, but it was really, really interesting for us to, to listen at the end of the, uh, of the day, the, the, the children's reflections, you know, and the way they create their own monsters, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and with the way, how, how they name it, how they perceive it, how they uh, picture it then you know mm -hmm. and it, it was a theme of conversation for their own family so it was kind of like a a very um, releasing you know experience just to, to put to put some emotions into words you know in that in, in that sense mm -hmm. you know yeah sounds yeah. exciting <laughs> eric i want to ask you is it uh, possible to find uh, more information about that performance on your Facebook page or on your website? Sure, sure. Uh, you can follow us in, uh, in our Facebook page in uh, Sensorama mm -hmm. and in our website sensorama.mx mm -hmm. um, and our Instagram also. Instagram, um, it's uh, let me let me give you the the 
the address. But yes, um, if you, if you want, we can invite you all to leave the this this play. It, it, it is really beautiful uh, play. Um, doesn't matter if you're not children anymore. It, it was <laughs> it was addressed to. This is this is a sensorama uh, MX to okay. Instagram. It is in the chat, and you can follow us, right? Okay. Uh, also, when because you say I need to check and maybe to make some calls, mm -hmm. if you uh, when you are sure about mm -hmm. the dates and things, uh, mm -hmm. you can share with us and we also can share it on our Facebook page to invite other uh, uh, people, friends and audiences who are part of the, our like some kind of network to come to join us in that journey also. Sure. Okay. Sure, 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 sure. This is a, a, a YouTube link uh, from our our teaser of the play. Mm -hmm. Okay, nice. Thank you. Uh, what do you think after this uh, period? Because in Bulgaria now situation is uh, like we can uh, go out, we can travel. Uh, we can visit uh, performances, concerts, and uh, so public events. It's some kind of uh, uh, semi-normal, let's call it like that. So we are now in, uh, in uh, now we can ask ourselves a question. Uh, do we continue with this kind of work? So work in digital um, sphere, uh, do we go back and work just in, in physical or we will try to combine uh, both of them? So my question is, what is the situation in, in um, uh, your countries? And uh, is that uh, question there at all? Or you have some other type of questions now uh, i'm seeing that lubomira wants to say something yeah please yeah uh, i attended one performance of yours that was um, for couples mm -hmm. and uh, maybe it's not part of this project but i just wanted to know um how many couples did you have and also um it was paid so I was interested to know if it worked actually, if, if it's feasible to do such things. Um, yes, this is another project. It's a, a project of uh, Verlitschka, which is our sonographer and me. And it's a sensory performance for couples. It's kind of really different aesthetic about um, than what uh, the other five was. And actually it was uh, quite interesting because uh, Yes, uh, there are uh, couples. I don't. I have to check out, and I could. I could write to how many they were, and uh, they. Uh, some of them, they haven't never experienced sensory theater, and uh, they have found out because of some Facebook ad or because we are exchanging feedback. At the end, we are sending them forms for feedback. And uh, and it was very surprising for me because more or less uh, the, those uh, digital performances, not only that one but the other ones, uh, they kind of um, attract people who have never been to sensory performance, uh, uh, physical sensory performance, and those experiences were first for them with that methodology. And um, and I don't know how they would <laughs> experience when they come to the real one, <laughs> if, it, if, it, if you could call it, call it real one. And yes, uh, we are thinking to develop it because there were people which could, couldn't come and they were writing to us if we have a recording and uh, wanted to get more. They were telling us that it could be, uh, because it was a short one, it was so, uh, you, you know, it was around 30 minutes. We were thinking that uh, it could be, it won't be okay to be more because it's online, but people are saying, yeah, hey, it could be much more and much more. And yeah, we are thinking to, to continue with that experience for sure. Uh, 
and uh, there is kind of because most of the people most of the feedback so you could uh, share yours with us if you want but it was for them like uh, not so much to to practice uh, to practice to participate in theater to uh, but much more like a um, practice for them to be together uh, and they uh, they felt it much more like uh, not therapeutic, it wasn't therapeutic at all, but much more like uh, a real time for togetherness, not so, not so to not so much like aesthetically, um, how to say, like an aesthetic, an aesthetic uh, experience. And it's different. Okay. I'm sorry, I interrupted the question about continuing. Well, uh, just to say that uh, in my opinion, uh, it's obvious that there is an audience for it. Uh, but the question here, for me at least, comes to how to make it uh, actually um, somehow on the positive zero when it comes to finances. Um, and I'm not sure how this works. I saw a lot of people uh, from our mm -hmm. circles, they gave their work for free during pandemics, which I, in my opinion, it's not very, uh, how to say, educated <laughs> for, yeah. the perform for the audience. Anyway, I think uh, definitely you should continue and all of you, you should continue trying to connect because um, we are spending so much time in the virtual world already uh, and we shouldn't be afraid of using it for, for um, artistic purposes. Uh, quite the opposite, we should, uh, in my opinion, we should get involved and actually turn it on, on our side. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, I I, uh, I I don't know how maybe Eric has more experience with that part with the finances because this was a funded project and uh, um, but what we were thinking is that uh, it the, uh, it could uh, live his life without us so it could live his life uh, life with the recording which is strange we were we weren't thinking about it at the beginning but we figured out that it could. Uh, just do his part on his own, which maybe could be in a way we created already. And now we 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 have to sell it, to market it, and uh, that maybe is kind of um, a way, an approach to because I I, I understand what you mean, and it's uh, and and also we were thinking to. Uh, to, to share it not only in Bulgaria, but to translate it uh, in, in different languages to have more audience about it. I, I, I'm not, uh, there are many um, uh, market researches, studies. Now, market researches now about uh, studies and researches now about the audience and uh, if the audience is okay for buying those digital performances or not. Uh, and uh, even if you if you go to one, we are you okay to to go to the next one and so on? And I think that this is uh, developing just now, and we will we will, because maybe now uh, well, what Milena was asking when we could go out and when we could experience and share physical performances, do we really uh, continue to have that need for uh, digital ones? not only as artists but as people as, as an audience and uh, because as an artist I, I could say yes but as an audience i'm not sure yeah it, it's it, it's very interesting uh question because um we uh in in the in our current time we we are asking ourselves the same, the same question uh, it, during this year we, we find ourselves with our own limitations and not just only artistic limitations, but also financial limitations. We, we explore the, the chance to, uh, to design sort of like a Netflix platform for our, our place, for our virtual place. So 
people can just uh, pay for them and, and they can uh, leave it in, in, any, in any schedule, you know? Uh, but the cost to design this kind of platform, this kind of Netflix platform, it was very expensive for us, you know? It, it was no chance. Um, we, we, I mean, here in Mexico, um, other conventional theater companies already have uh, this process. Uh, they have uh, in, into the commercial uh, place. And yes, for, for them, it is not, uh, you know, a question that they, that, that they or whether continue or not. They, I'm sure that they will continue because it's profitable, you know. Um, so for us, we started to change our our perception in, in this in this sense because it, it, it was not um, kind of like a sense of of of, of having a, a a big profit out of this, but we kind of like change our approach into create new audiences, you know, new public, um, big and in, in in terms of internationality you know, of our own work. So maybe you don't get paid so much because we already charge for this kind of place around between five, eight dollars per person, just in, in, a, in, a, in, in this range of prices. So for, for us, it's not, it, it, it's not uh, a profitable, you know, like a money um, importance, but we, at the same time, we receive like exposure, you know, we, we receive uh, some other uh, recommendations from other, other uh, people from outside Mexico. So in, in, in that way, sometimes uh, people get to know us and they also uh, discover that we, we work for, for workshops for, for uh, companies, you know, or we, we have this uh, sense of marketing, the, this sensory marketing uh, experiences. So sometimes people say, okay, um, my, my couple invited me to, to, to Sensorama. I didn't know what, to, uh, what was that. I kept very interesting about your work. I kept uh, investigating your website and I had the experience, the personal experience, but now I see that you guys are doing something for 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 um, for human resources within within companies, you know. So I I'm interested in that, you know. So in, in that way, it's kind of like a like a virtual brochure for us, you know, to 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 share our our work to to, to our people. Um, so we, we're trying to, to to find a balance, you know, between between conventional uh, sensory theater plays and virtuality. Uh, and, and yes, I guess if, 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 if the platforms, kind of Netflix platforms, kind of reduce their cost uh, in, in the long term, I guess it is a very good opportunity for us because that, that, in that way, people are, are very eager to experience uh, in their own homes uh, uh, kind of more uh, interactive place, you know, uh, in in the comfort of their living room, you know. So I guess that that's that's a good uh, opportunity. It's it's kind of like, it's kind of um, difficult for us right now, but we hope in the in the future to be available, you know. So the, your way is continue to continue more uh, to explore the digital, like a digital platform, and to to continue to work there and in that field in that way, let's say. But you yes. have an interest to to combine like uh, so phys in one performance, so physical and 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 digital. Do you have interest in that? And do you, maybe you also already have some uh, experiences or, or? Yes, we, we already have a virtual, uh, a virtual uh, sensory experience. 
so that it, it's kind of like a, like integrating these both worlds but we are at the beginning of the process in in the in the virtual world so to speak um it, it's it's kind of like i i compare this into the video games world you know uh you remember these old video games of the 80s you know so in in nowadays the, the video games are very you know modern and very realistic you know but in terms of virtual world uh i guess in a sense uh it's just beginning you know and and we ha kind of have the frustrations that that yes th this is uh very interesting but they can never be replaced in the in uh, uh, the imagination you know the the other screen that we have inside of us but at the same time we kind of like explore because in a marketing uh, sense people are very interested yet you know oh yes it's a virtual play uh, let's go uh, let's pay um, uh, let, let's leave it you know and it's kind of like having this 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 uh, inner conflict for us you know uh, but but if we, we are we are kind of exploring we, we are in in our very beginnings you know we we need to to do some research maybe uh lubomira uh you can uh share something in which way uh, uh your organization and and uh, your partners organization also explore because eric uh, just mentioned so VR and and this kind of technology. So, so you go you came from from other point of view, but also trying to explore new things and new combination with with physical and uh, digital realities. Mm, uh, yeah. Well, um, my company started to explore uh, the edge technologies like VR and uh, all the kinds of uh, MR, AR and uh, R things uh, a few years ago. And uh, we started producing um, from time to time certain projects uh, like films. And um, it's very interesting that they 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 have this side that all of those uh, let's call them products if it's a movie or a, uh, some kind of a game or something they actually all of the people working in this field are calling it experience uh, because it's uh, so complex that actually you are immersed into this other reality and uh, for us uh, in Bulgaria, because not many organizations actually know what this is, um, it was very hard for us to, to work here and to develop. So we started uh, organizing the a small society around us. Uh, and this year, uh, especially, we have this project where we are meeting with different kinds of organizations and uh, just explore together with them um, if they need um, to, to work with edge technologies, what they can do and actually how to integrate them in uh, their program, in their uh, work how to how to use it to reach new audiences uh, and I, I I have few things that I noticed first of all most of the organizations are actually struggling with uh, things that for us look quite banal but uh, actually they they for example they want to do streaming or something that is very very simple for us uh we are going there with uh, vr cameras and stuff and they're like oh but can you do a, a streaming for us uh so most of the organizations are actually um, um, so much behind the technologies so they they still cannot think of anything more than a 2d screen um but the other thing is that we invited, uh, uh, of course, the inner theater and uh, a few other theater groups 
that are more, let's say, innovative, in, in our opinion, <laughs> uh, to work with us and actually to explore how to, how to start uh, using uh, VR or at least um, how to say this immersive 360 video. Um, and by now we have a few things that we have done. Um, they're still in process, uh, but I think it's very interesting how uh, this, uh, this pandemic situation came just in time to when these technologies are so developed, uh, because imagine if we didn't have them, uh, it would be quite, quite strange. So I don't know what to say more, but uh, in general, we are trying to develop it. We have a few projects that are um, with scientific organizations. Uh, last month, we started working with the Sofia Zoo. Um, and all of them, they have very different ideas, but generally uh, people want to get closer to the audience. All of the institutions, they just want to get inside of the house of their uh, audience and, um, and touch them. People are, are craving for some contact, for some kind of, um through technology to to experience another human being or um some kind of uh, experience so i think this would be another field that will develop and i uh, i don't know if you have seen already performances in virtual reality but um it's very very different and i don't know if I answered the question. I took so, so much time, sorry. <laughs> but I would like to ask you, if you don't mind, in mm. um, our event, I share all uh, the Facebook pages and website of all our organization involved in the project. Uh, but if you don't mind, could you share also here in the chat uh, the website or Facebook of your organization of course, after the meeting, as we usually do, we will share the link for sharing contacts so, so you can all have contacts from all of us here. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Lubomira. Uh, you and on our previous uh, meeting, you shared that your, uh, that your interest then was focused really on that, to make a symbiosis, symbiosis between those two kinds of, of uh, realities or, or two kinds of uh, theaters. So are you still in, in that, uh, do you still look in that way? I just, yes, I just saw Barbara. Did you have a hand up you want to say something? Uh, if I, if Buchaki, I love money, I should, I'm sorry, we have uh, working here. Do you hear me? Yes. Yes. I, I'm so glad what I've heard now um, from Lyubomira. Mm -hmm. uh, it's okay. Um, I would just like, to, I think today is Enrique's birthday. Yes. <laughs> so, yes. It would be really nice if you, if we remember that. Uh, I don't know how long he will be with us still. Um, I would just like um, to remind us not to forget that um, sensorial language um, it is very immersive and is um, organically, physically immersive. When we talk about VR, I suppose, uh, I don't have a lot of experience with VR, so please correct me if I'm wrong. It's, um, um, if I am right, then this is more about mental immersion, uh, like in movies, because you don't have taste, you don't have smell. Um, touch you have, but it's virtual touch. Um, I don't know, this is my knowledge, but I can be wrong because as Lubomira said, 
I am one, the one who is also very back in technology. I don't, I don't play so much video games or, and I don't have experience with VR, but um, the speciality that we have with sensorial language physically is physical immersion and uh, not mental and um, not only mental, let's say like that. And I really uh, want to know if it's possible to, to find, uh, to include in this VR uh, also smells, um, because then this can go deep and touch. I mean, that if you, if you can, uh, you, yeah, I know you can, um, I, I know by memory that you can have experience of movement and balance and up and down and so on, but, uh, I mean, to, to touch different textures, is it possible? Where are we in science with this VR? Um, I would really like to know that, if it's possible. Yeah, well, uh, there are some researches about it and uh, they're, um, they are experimenting with it, actually. Uh, uh, we were also thinking, and there are like, um, escape rooms where uh, certain objects are placed and you can actually touch them while you are in the with the headset on your head um, so there are such things uh, the what's interesting is that you're making such uh, like you're dividing the mental part of, of the immersion from the sens sensory one. And for me, uh, you cannot, I mean, even if you're doing it uh, uh, live uh, with the people, again, um, the, the feeling that you have is in the first place created in your mind, uh, most of the feelings. And uh, the I think this project of inner theater is actually showing it that, you can smell things by just thinking of them. Um, and this, this VR and all those technologies are actually just tools that you can use. It's the same as with the camera. It's a tool you can use to, to work with the audience, but it's not, um, uh, how to say, I don't see the difference. I, for me, there is not such a big difference and, um, I have seen so many things now that I can say, uh, and I have seen people watching, and I can say their emotions are quite strong, even seeing a movie. And it's interesting how uh, everyone is connecting VR with gaming. Uh, but actually, we are doing here a festival with um, only I mean, we also have content that is game, games, but we are trying to make a selection of movies that are in VR. Uh, and some of them require you to make action. Some of them require you to touch something or to, to go somewhere physically. And uh, I can say that people are very touched. And especially if the topic is some kind of... A, social issue that connects with them people can experience quite the um how to say that uh quite ecstatic about it so yeah uh if you have some time uh and someday you come um uh, you're welcome to 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 see what we are doing I would really li like to because uh, my hearing is different than imagining, is different than experiencing mm -hmm. it for real. So I hope I can do this um, as soon as possible. I This was my question in uh, short because um, I don't know where we are going <laughs> with this COVID stuff. So I will put myself off for now.
Thank you. I will I will take links. I'll share with you um, three three photos uh, of some of our experiences uh, with virtual reality. And what we have experienced is that um, we, we don't project a very concrete um, images in the in the screen. Uh, we all, we just project some um, abstract canvas, you know, kind of like um, shapes and colors and textures. So they're, they, they don't interfere with the imagination process. And we are discovering that at the same time, the, the people are with uh, their eyes open and they are stimulated in all their senses, touch, uh, flavor, uh, aromas. They started to, to recreate imagination even with their, their eyes uh, open uh, because they kind of like project this imagination in that, in that abstract canvas that, 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 that yeah, exists in, in, the, in, the, in the virtual screen. So uh, we, we, we are trying to kind of like experiment, you know, in, in, in ways that, that uh, virtual reality is not a limitation, but uh, could uh, convert in, in another tool, in another creative tool, in another creative uh, process, you know? It's kind of tricky, but um, we, we, it's very interesting also, you know? Um, in 2016, I co-directed a labyrinth in um, in um, Bucharest with uh, Bogdan Bogdan Mechibor, and um, we used virtual reality in this. But you know, this is virtual reality, isn't it? I mean, this, all of it. So my interest is in using virtual reality to to play to expose this to people. So in that performance, we had a, um, a scene where somebody was walked wearing virtual reality. So they were holding a little girl's hand and they walked through a school and there were children playing. And they looked down and they could see the, the girl. Uh, but the performance was in the same school. So they were walking exactly the same path, but it was at night. And then so they they were experiencing this, the school in day, and then they took the goggles off, and it was the same girl. So it was a big shock because you know. So playing the brain isn't very good at uh, being able to tell the difference between um, uh, virtual reality and reality. So it's very powerful. Um, so I think I like Bar like Barbara. For me, I'm very uh, curious. So concerned about where we are going as a race, about this kind of combination of the computer and the human coming together. Um, and uh, and I, I made a play called The Mark of Blanket and I performed it at a seminar in Brazil from my home, <laughs> um, which is nice. Um, and. Uh, and the first line of the play is that, um, uh, if I can remember it, is today's performance takes place on the stage of the prefrontal cortex in the theater of the mind. Uh, to enter the theater, you need only close your eyes. So immediately, you know, we have everything we need in here. And, uh, and like Enrique says, this, this site is a tyrant, you know? So when we talk about the digital, often we think about the visual, but actually we can also use the digital to, to um, destabilize this tyrant. And what neuroscience is finding out now, it's very interesting, is that in the brain, um, there's a turf war going on. Um, and what I mean is that the senses fight for territory in the brain. 
So if you close your eyes for more than an hour, parts of the brain that are used for sight are invaded by the other senses. But physically, the networks start to invade. Yes, Barbara. Do you have a link to this research? I would uh, like to see it. Um, can you send it to us? Yeah, I can. Because. Um, yeah. Thank you. Here uh, on Messenger or later? Uh, yeah, I, I can. Um, I, I can't remember right now, but there's a book uh, and it just, just come out by a neuroscientist. Um, I can't remember his name, but it'll come. I think it's called Live, Live Wired, I think is the name of the book. Um, maybe if you find it later, maybe you can send on mail or I will, I will bother you on Facebook otherwise. That's For good. sure. <laughs> yeah, thank you. It's, it's called Live Wired by David Eggleman. Uh -huh. What they're finding is that brain is not we knew about it being plastic, you know, that it, it has the past capacity to change, but what they're realizing it's changing all the time. Yeah. Physically, you know, like, so we are like a computer. So I'm, I'm coming back to Romania in, in September, October to work with Bogdan again um, <laughs> on a, a real labyrinth. And I think the influence on that will be this experience we, we've had for the last two years. Um, and this digitization of society. Um, I'm very interested in, in, in a man called uh, Alan Turing, who first used the word computer uh, before computers. Computer was a name for a person. Uh, and in the 30s, he, I don't know if you know his story, but he's a very interesting man. He was openly gay in a very time when it was illegal. Um, uh, but he was the best mathematician in the country. So they employed him, the government, to try and break the Enigma code that the Germans were using to communicate. So he had to build a co the first computer to do that. But he wrote a paper in the 30s, which was uh, the first time to use the word computer for a machine. Uh, and, and one of the questions he was asked is, can a, can a computer think? And he, he, he thought, well, we, we don't even know what thinking is, so how can we know if a computer is thinking? So he turned it around and said, well, if a computer can fool us into thinking it's human, then yes, it probably is thinking. So he invented something called the imitation game or the Turing test. So the labyrinth I, I'm thinking of is going to be called the Turing test or the imitation game. And, and um, this, this game, uh, this test has never been passed. Like, even though we have very fantastic computers, the Turing test has not been passed. So in, in the Turing test, there are three um, elements. There's person A, person B, and person C. And person A is a man pretending to be a woman. This is very important. Person B, is somebody who's asking questions to person A. They're all in different rooms. Uh, they're communicating on a, through text. And person C is a judge, a witness, who is watching this exchange and has to decide if either of these uh, people is a computer. So person A is the computer. Uh, and um, apart from 30% of the people uh, to I don't know, but they can't notice that it hasn't been broken. Most 70% of people can recognize when it's a computer pretending to be a woman. So how do you, what, what does that mean? It means that he defined a human as somebody who performs, who can perform, who can pretend to be something they're not. And so I'm very interested in, in this idea that we are pretending right now that we exist and that this is real and there's something else which is virtual. And that we're not a computer. So how do we know we're not just a computer, that the brain is just a very advanced computer that's fooled us into believing that there's a person here. So this is, these are the questions I, 
I explored in Markov Blanket, which is the other thing I wanted to say about that play is, is it was performed in front of 50 people online or something like that. And doing it, I realized I couldn't record it. And like Gabriella was talking about your play, it just doesn't work. It has to be present. It has to be people pretending to be an audience, pretending to listen to a person. And, uh, and that's the power of it, the, what Boal used to call the multiple regard of the other. Um, otherwise, it's just a podcast or a radio play, which is great. But, you know, theater is about people together, experiencing something together. So, so yeah, um, that's where I'm working at the moment. And I'm also interested in virtual reality about what it can give us that we can't experience ourselves. So I don't know what it's like to be a young girl in Gaza, but maybe I can experience a little bit of that and through seeing through her eyes. But I can fly if I want, so in a glider or something, so I don't need to fly. The other thing it can do is it can make me uh, this small. So I'm working with a gallery in London to explore ways of seeing art as if we were walking around the art like this small. Uh, that's some of the work I'm doing at the moment. Sorry, I saw Sylvia had her hand up as well. Yes, thank you very much for, for this opportunity to share something. And uh, uh, first of Sylvia, I think that we are losing you. Can you repeat? She wanted to come out as a computer. And so on. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry? I said, do you want to come out as a computer now and tell us you're actually <laughs> not a real person? I'm kidding. Do you hear, do you hear me? No. Yeah. Yes? Oh. Uh, Okay, if I stop my video, do you hear me now? Yes, it's better. It's better, yes. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, so um, now uh, we from our aesthetic department uh, are elaborating a project, uh, working project. Um, the pandemic uh, is a challenge to aesthetics and arts and uh, uh, it ends uh, in, in, in October, I think. Until now, uh, we have a very interesting research so far. Uh, there is a book of uh, Robert Hassan, uh, which is uh, about cultural industries now and the cultural politics. And uh, now he concludes that uh, we still are analogous people uh, who are living in a digital world and uh, these two worlds have uh, different logic uh, so um, I personally uh, am working on a module Pearl in the Crown it's Koron in Bulgarian a new form of art in uh, social isolation and uh, what I uh, what I'm observing is that uh, namely uh, immersive and expressive arts are are that uh, who uh, which sorry uh, make the bridge uh, for us people as uh, and uh, and uh, this is for me the main clue of, for the theater of senses to survive nevertheless in uh, nevertheless uh, what the conditions are <laughs> whether virtual or real. Uh, because there are so, so many, so many clues in the physical world. Uh, like uh, maybe, you know, uh, the website Atlas Obscura uh, were in lockdown. Uh, they put something like quiz. Uh, please uh, take a look of the stars. Which, uh, which stars can you see from any part of the world? Or uh, which are the, the herbs around you in the area and so on? Uh, so I think, uh, in conclusion, uh, not, not to be long, uh, to, 
to say that uh, uh, the theater of uh, the senses uh, can be and this a lens for human senses and uh, and feelings and psych and, and so on so please don't stop with your projects thank you thanks Sylvia I just wanted to say one more thing because I think sorry Milana no no I'm listening not, not you Milan the other Milana had a hand up so. I wanted to say something but I will take it after you <laughs> yeah it's about um, this idea that, you know, I think if the, I said, you know, this is virtual and maybe we're, our brain is just a computer, but there is something more, something else. And, and the analogy I use, it's, um, it's an argument I have with a, a friend who is a neuroscientist about Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. So Beethoven never heard the Ninth Symphony being played. Maybe I mentioned this before. So I, I, I told him that's a tragedy, you know, um, that he never heard his own, an orchestra playing his music. And he argued, no, that's, <laughs> the orchestra could never play it as well as he could hear it in his own mind. It was pure in his own yeah. mind. And for me, that's, it's still, I, I don't agree with him. You can't tickle yourself, you know. Nobody can tickle themselves. You have to be tickled. And so something is appreciated when it's given and shared. So if we end up in a world where everybody's got virtual reality goggles on, it's, it's, our, it's the end of us. <laughs> you know? Then we just become consumers of content. The content is one, not the context. That's all. Yeah, that's why I, I wanted to remind us to don't, let's not forget the roots. I, I think it's really good to uh, research both sides parallelly, you know? So we keep the roots and we never forget um, what, is, what is authentic and what is real and personal and um, physical, person to person. And then I think beside for comparison and uh, yeah, we have to, we have to go, um, we have to walk with the time. Milena, u koraku sa časom, kako vi, kako to kažeš ti? I don't know the English expression. Da si vov čas vreme to si. How to say it in English? Um, yeah, so now you know, it's okay. Contempo. Just tell it in Bulgarian. Contempo. Contem yeah, no, yeah. Um, be in the, time, like... Uh, yeah, being in time. Be in like a time, to be in time in some way. Yeah. This, yeah, in Slovenian, uh, u, u koraku, u koraku s časom. Da, da, srpskom u koraku s vremenom, so... <laughs> koraku s vremenom, da, yeah, yeah. Um, evo, so I, um, I, I think it's really good that we have both sides. I think it's good from this COVID that uh, forced us to uh, communicate more digitally and more uh, via internet and we are in a time of uh, artificial intelligence that that is true and uh, development goes in this way and uh, industrial you no know, technological uh, development goes in this way so, so we have to i think we have to keep both you know the trad tradition and innovation mm -hmm. and then we would have everything. No? Yeah, I yeah. think so. May I now uh, say from the position of the audience, because I think that the question was first actually asked, uh, first it was directed to the audience and would your audience feel interested? Um, I would say yes, if it comes to uh, the personal contact, because that was what I was experiencing uh, during your performances. Uh, so yes, when it uh, when it feels that I can come in contact with other people, 
and I can come in contact with myself because it was also um, a consequence of the, of the performances uh, that it went both ways somehow. But being somehow, uh, I think that uh, yeah, it was a good expression, a consumer of content leaves me very, very cold. Honestly speaking, I, I just get very uninterested because it seems, because it's, I would say it was a tendency before the pandemics that, yeah, but it could be so wow, like in many ways. Uh, the, the, the new technological developments can do such like interesting experience, but basically I'm not very interested to be in some sort of virtual reality world that some, some other person's, ima person's imagination created for me, even if it is very, yeah, different and very exciting or something like this, but what I would like is to be in contact with other people and to be able to somehow get in touch with my own imagination and to develop it. Um, so uh, yes, I think that um, somehow this idea of uh, the virtual reality, which could get us to experience new things was there before the pandemics, but the insight of the pandemics for me, at least, even if it, I was like in, I was living in the only country that, that didn't have a lockdown, was that I actually need to be in contact with other people. And the insight that I got from uh, your performance is that, yeah, but this contact could be made online as well. As long as I know that there is another living and breathing creature from on the other side that we could share experiences. Um, so, uh, hmm, yeah. Let's see what happens uh, like after the pandemic go many ways. <laughs> uh, as I'm hearing you, I'm thinking that there is some kind of phonia. Uh, I, uh, I couldn't, I don't know if everybody else didn't hear, but it is echoing. And yeah, yeah, I've heard it also. Mm -hmm. But now it's gone, yes? Yeah, it's okay now. Okay, so as I'm listening to you, I'm thinking uh, maybe it's not about technology, but the person behind the technology. The, because you could do everything with everything. And uh, uh, as we figure out in those five performances, we could uh, kind of <laughs> provoke feelings, emotions uh, to touch to each other. And we, were, we wasn't sure that that this could happen and it is intimate and personal theater as well uh, and of course you could make it many different ways but this also for me it's like uh, what Eric shared with the VR it could be not somebody's imagination could be so open and abstract so it could get into you um, I, I'm, I'm a person who it's, my thinking is like that to not um, uh, to see or to to um, to search for different ways for to to not uh, forget the rules but to go with the tree of to the unlimitless <laughs> in a way and uh, that's what I'm thinking while I'm while I'm listening. Eric, uh, I I thought I saw you that you would like to share something. Yes, um, one final thought uh, I had to go to, but um, before I go, we in Sensorama developed um, a concept uh, back in the day. Um, the concept is uh, Trojan horse. Uh, and we had to develop that concept because we, we had this kind of like uh, same reflection the moment we started to, to work for big companies. Uh, with, with big corporations. And sometimes the corporations asked us something that, that could um, made us uh, go backwards in our own process, uh, our, our creative process. So we, we had to kind of like uh, negotiate with them, you know? And we kind of like have to, to develop this, this concept of Trojan horse because 
yes, they asked us to to design an experience, a commercial experience, to uh, to make a publicity no? uh, of of one of their products. But at the same time, we we knew that through our own methodology, like a Trojan horse, we introduced this. Um, very dangerous uh, artistic uh, change of visual paradigm, you know, into the big corporations. And at the end of the day, we knew that we were going to to interact with human beings, you know, uh, regardless uh, their their own titles and whatever, you know. So uh, at the end of the day, the, the, the pe people were okay. Yes, I received the the publicity information but at the end we also received an uh, an opportunity to to reconnect with ourselves with we creative with we get in touch into our sensibility you know all all of the, the the what we do in sensorama so in this kind of virtual virtual um, uh, world i understand the concerns that because we, we also have those concerns but at the same time, we we kind of like have this the the kind of like the authority, the authority, and the confidence that we know our own limitations. That what that the tools and the technology are not going to uh, distort our essence. You know, it's just going to be another way to to make another Trojan horse for people just to. Go oh yes, they are virtual because they're uh, the the all uh, the all the the vanguardist thing, you know. But once you put our own uh, virtual lenses, people are not uh, not going to expect the the common thing, you know. They're going to have a different experience, you know. So that's kind of like the the final thought I wanted to share with you. Thank you very much to all of you. Uh, I. Uh, uh, follow us in, in, in our website and I'm going to get back to you to the to the play that um, Un Lugar para los Monsters, a place for the monsters. All right. Thank you very much, Eric. Bye bye. Have a good one. Bye bye. Bye bye. 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 Something or did they did they stop you? No, no, no. I was just saying bye to Eric. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I wanted to Milena. You wanted to tell something. Share something. Yes, I would like. To. Okay, I forgot okay, again. Uh, have another Milena, which I now. Uh, I think that is because you have another one. Can I? If I will, but I am afraid if I remove you. You see the other Milena Mikhailova. Yes. I see all of you. Okay, I will. Can you speak now? Yes, do you hear each other? Yes, okay, it was because of this. Okay, about what we are talking till now, uh, I uh, appreciate very much uh, the theater which is happening uh, in real life, you know, in, uh, in reality. I actually love it and I, I watch it theater all the time, okay? But at the same time, uh, uh, I appreciate uh, the online performances as well very much, uh, especially when talking about uh, the five performances of in the theater, which I was I was uh, watched and participated in them recently. Of in the theater performances, I remember very well how I was feeling during these performances. So I can never say that it was uh, artificial. It was so real, so emotional, and uh, I can say that. Uh, in this, uh, in this virtual reality, uh, the imagination is, is, a, is a power. The imagination is big power, actually. Imagination, memory, memory, or, uh, emotions, which we all share here and now. This very important moment that we are here and now at the moment. We all are now. We don't, for, for example, we don't know uh, everyone in this group, for example, but uh, still we, uh, it, it's very interesting how actually uh, the online sharing with each other is some kind of uh, very uh, powerful close up, you know, it really grows up. 
it's 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 as if it's it's uh, as if in reality, you know, because it's uh, as if you're closing up the camera very close to the other people in this uh, chat at the moment, and we are all here. And this reality is here, and this reality is real. You know, we can you can't say it's not real because it is because we are here and now together and we speak and we share different things with each other. It is great, you know. So uh, this this is uh, I I feel it like a very intimate close up, you know, because uh, uh, you know it's uh, it's really happened. It, besides, besides it's recording, you know. You you, you hear, we hear evidence. It really happened. <laughs> You know, yeah, it's important, uh, and uh, that's all. You know, it's uh, that's what I wanted to say. That it's uh, I I don't want to compare the both realities. They both exist, and we all are in these realities, and so we feel great. And uh, what what to say? Um, when when was the performance for the for for hearing? Uh, we had the provocation to be. Uh, to to be uh, to be uh, together with uh, one of the people in the in the chat only. Uh, we we never knew each other before. We, we didn't know each other before the this, the this performance, but we met during the performance, and we had uh, several several minutes to to share something with each other, without seeing each other, but just uh, hearing each other each, each other's voices and uh, sharing some 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 some, uh, some some thoughts. You know, it was so great. You know to to share yourself with someone you don't know even, but uh, when it's kind of some kind of a, a part of the performance, and uh, it's kind of the performance, but it's the kind of your own reality as well. And it's, uh, it's something which I really felt, and I was there, and this person was there, and we all have that shared what we experienced, what we were feeling. So when we talk about feeling, you can't say it's not real, you know, because you felt something, and you experienced something real. That's what I think, yeah. So uh, yes, we have different realities, we have different uh, uh, theater experiences, but they are all uh, part of us. And uh, uh, actually, the main uh, the main source here is that uh, we are all humans uh, are making this aliveness. Okay, so different kind of livenesses, uh, but we are all there, and uh, and they are all remarkable experiences for us. I think. Yeah. That's my most which I want to share with you now as well. Do we hear each other? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Milena. Thank you very much, Milena. May I say something? Uh, about, I really like the, the Gabriela's idea about uh, there are many ways of doing one thing. I really think that yeah, it might be some, uh, some of the, um, what shall I say? Uh, now I forgot the word in English, of course. Uh, Say the word. Boca. What? Boca. Boca. Bright. 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 Not boca, man. Inside. Oh, boca. Boca. Uh -huh. Inside. Yeah, inside would be good. Uh, well, uh, so it is uh, one of the insights of, of the pandemics, I believe, and about the situation, because I would say that it's different um, experiencing this. Um, like um yeah uh, in virtual reality but uh, at the same time it's not necessarily limiting i would say it's not like necessarily on the bad side that yeah but we, we can't see each other we can't be with each other i would be very curious to compare and come to some of your uh, performances live because it's interesting but actually the last time i was um participating in a course in storytelling. So I had the, poly pos uh, the possibility to perform myself both online and live afterwards. And I would say that I could actually manage much better. Of course, I'm a beginner online, strangely enough, because I was so, when it was live, I was so unprepared with the public. It was the same people. They could yeah, see me both times in real time, but in different ways. But I was very unprepared with um, when it comes to the distance and when it comes to, yeah, but what am I doing so I could be more natural online? So um, yeah, it's interesting. I mean, sometimes environments can really, uh, 
what shall I say, open things in us in unexpected ways, <laughs> really. Do you think that you're more brave when you're online? No, 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 it, it has it. nothing to do with that, actually. <laughs> um, I think that somehow I was more brave when, uh, not, not brave, but I was, um, it might have been like about the nature of what I was uh, performing because it was something quite personal, uh, but I could be more myself in my own environment and coming like into an environment that I was not, um, because I never went to this place before, mm -hmm. somehow really put me into somehow some sort of, yeah, I don't know the place. I'm not sure that I know the people. I've just met them online. I'm not sure what I would feel about. It was very weird. It's like in some way you, you come close to each other and I would say closer somehow than in real life more often. And then when you meet like in real life, you really, I really experienced like a distance that I didn't feel, feel online. But I think that it might be culturally like typical because I think that people here are, are a bit more distanced and somehow online they feel more, more comfortable, so the distance uh, gets closer <laughs> when we meet in their natural environment, like with other people, live, then the distance gets very, mm. it, it gets back to far away. So I don't know, I, what I felt myself is that I couldn't really handle it <laughs> like the second time. Um, so I don't know, it's... Uh, both like um, being online is both, yeah, it has its advantages and disadvantages, but sometimes it can surprise us. Yeah, thank you for sharing your experience with us. Uh, we have a lot of insights and many more questions. <laughs> and I really, I really hope we could continue to see each other and discuss online or physically or both <laughs> in symbiosis. Uh, I want to thank you all for participating and sharing your thoughts and feelings and experiences today with us. Um, our project is about to to end soon and we will share with you we will create now a book a digital book with some of the insights with some thoughts uh, some feedback some information and we will share it with you and also uh, I hope you are all okay to share your contacts between each other to exchange contacts so we could keep in touch and continue being together no matter where when and uh, everything. Thank you a lot for tonight and for for all the nights which were and are coming. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Keep bye. us informed. Thank you. And bye bye. 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 Bye.